Hello, and welcome to another Rubrik Solutions walkthrough. I'm Mike Preston, and today we're going to walk through how to configure the VM linking feature that came out with the 4.1 release of our cloud data management platform. VM linking in a nutshell allows us to maintain virtual machine identity as it's migrated across vCenter server instances. In Rubrik terms, this means we can hold on to the virtual machine's backup history and backup chain, even if it's moved to another vCenter server in a different SSO domain. Making VM linking a perfect add-on for customers looking to migrate into platforms like VMware Cloud Foundation, or even those who decide to stand up new vCenters when performing upgrades. Now, before we get into how to configure VM linking, let's take a step back and have a look at what happens if we don't have a functionality like this to link our VMs. First up, we need to understand how VMware identifies virtual machines within a vCenter server instance. vCenter will assign each VM what is called a MoRef ID, or a Managed Reference Object ID, as it is registered within that instance. MoRefs are unique within their own vCenter server instance, however, they can be duplicated across different vCenters. We can see here that VM1 and VM3 actually have the same MoRef. However, they're in different vCenter server instances. Now let's see what happens when we throw Rubrik into the mix. As the vCenter servers are added and inventoried into our software, Rubrik will assign each vCenter its own unique ID. This UUID is how Rubrik addresses and identifies each vCenter server in its inventory. As for the VMs, Rubrik generates an ID for them as well, which is made up first with the UUID of the vCenter that the VM belongs to, and then appended with the actual MoRef ID of the VM. Now, Let's take a look at what happens if we migrate a VM from one vCenter to another. Moving VM2 from vCenter1 to vCenter2 generates a new MoRef ID for that VM, as the vCenter it's now connected to detects it as a new virtual machine. This will cause Rubrik to detect it as a new virtual machine as well, upon which time Rubrik will generate a new ID for that VM. On the flip side, the old ID of the VM will be marked as a relic within the Rubrik CDM. Now, without VM linking, this poses a couple of problems. Firstly, we probably have some backup history of that old VM, meaning we've already taken a full backup and a number of incrementals. Secondly, with the detection of VM2 as a new VM, it will be inventoried into Rubrik as an unmanaged object, meaning it isn't a member of any SLA domains. Thirdly, if we go ahead and add this migrated VM to an SLA domain and begin taking backups again, we'll have to start out as if this was a new virtual machine, taking yet another full backup. In the end, we're left with two objects within Rubrik to manage in terms of retention and ensuring we're compliant with any policy set forth from our organizations, and it's certainly a waste of time in terms of management and a waste of capacity as we now have to store two full backups of that VM. So let's reset and run this scenario again, but this time, we'll make sure VM linking is enabled on our vCenter Server 2 instance. Now, as we migrate VM2 to vCenter 2, we can see that we are still going to generate another MoRef, and Rubrik will still create a new ID for the VM. However, what we don't see is that Rubrik links our new ID to the old ID behind the scenes. This provides for a seamless migration of the VM within the Rubrik platform. It will maintain its SLA domain designation and continue to use that forever incremental chain from the old VM, meaning we don't have to store duplicate full backups just because we migrated the VM. And best of all, the VM is still treated as a single object within the Rubrik UI. So that's VM linking in a nutshell. Now it's time to jump into the lab and configure VM linking and test it out. All right. So here we are in the Rubrik dashboard, taking a look at a VM called mpreston-vmlink. As you can see, the VM is currently a member of the vcsa.rubrik.us vCenter and is already assigned to an SLA domain. We also have a few backups of this VM that we've already taken. Looking at those, we can see that the first backup was indeed a full backup of our VM, ingesting 42.9 gigabytes of data. Looking at the other backups that have been taken, we can see there are only incremental backups, ingesting only 10.8 megabytes, and subsequently 13.4 megabytes. So this VM definitely has some history around it. Now let's go into PowerShell and see what that VM looks like in terms of its MoRef and its Rubrik ID. So I have a script here 
that just gathers some information around the VM that we're looking at. Now I've spared you the pain of watching me connect to everything. I've already done that. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to see what that VM's MoRef looks like within vCenter. As you can see, it's assigned to VM-6941. Now let's see what that same VM looks like within Rubrik. You can see here I've selected the vCenter ID, which is a big long UUID that's assigned to vcsa.rubric.us, as well as a virtual machine ID, which is a combination of that MoRef that we got earlier, as well as the vCenter's UUID. Now what we're going to do today is migrate this VM from the vcsa.rubric.us vCenter to the vcsa03.rubric.us vCenter. And before we do that, Let's go into Rubrik and make sure that VM linking is actually enabled on that vCenter. To enable VM linking within Rubrik, simply go to the gear icon and select vCenter servers. This will bring up a list of all the vCenter servers that have been registered within Rubrik. Now the one we're migrating into is VCSA03, so let's go ahead and enable VM linking on that vCenter server. To do that, select the ellipsis menu, click edit. Like most things within Rubrik, Enabling VM linking is very, very simple. Simply select the checkbox to enable VM linking and provide your vCenter credentials once more. Click Update. And that's all there is to it. Now we have VM linking enabled on vCSA03. So any VMs that move from one vCenter that's registered within Rubrik into vCSA03, Rubrik should behind the scenes automatically link those VMs for us. So let's go ahead and migrate our VM. To do this, we're going to use this simple script right here. Again, I've spared you the pain of watching me try to authenticate to all of these vCenter servers and gather the required information we need for the move VM command. But with that, let's go through the command and how it works. The move VM commandlet is a pretty simple commandlet. We essentially pass it the VM, the VM in which we'd like to migrate, a vMotion priority, and then a destination. That destination includes getting the host on which we'd like to migrate to, and then providing some information around the network adapter, what port group we'd like to connect this to, as well as the data store we'd like to migrate to. Again, I've already gone ahead and gathered all this information for us, so we can simply just run the move VM commandlet as it is right now. So as you can see, the process of migrating this virtual machine has already started. So let's go into vCenter and take a look and make sure the tasks are actually occurring. So here we are within our source vCenter, and we can see that the relocate virtual machine task has kicked off. If we head over to our target vCenter, vcsa03, we can see that a receive operation has also kicked off, waiting for that VM to be migrated into this environment. All right, we can see that the migration task is finished. So let's head back into Rubrik and see what it looks like. Now before our VMs will actually be linked, we actually need to refresh our VCSA03 vCenter. To do that, we'll head back to the gear icon and back into our listing of vCenter servers. We'll select VCSA03 from the list, head up to the ellipsis menu at the top of the screen and click Refresh vCenter. This will kick off the vCenter refresh task. And if we head back to the dashboard, we should hopefully see some results. So as you can see, the second line in the activity column there says, finished refreshing vCenter, automatically linked one virtual machine. That's good. That's more than likely our mpreston-vm link machine that we just migrated into that vCenter. So let's go back into PowerShell and see how the MoRef IDs and Rubrik IDs have changed. All right, let's run these same commands again except now we have to change our vCenter to vcsa03, since that's where the VM lives now. So we'll go ahead and we'll get the VM information as it pertains to VMware. We can see that the MoRef ID has changed. It's now VM-806, and that's because it's a new VM according to VMware. We'll go ahead and we'll take a look at what rubric reports now. So the rubric ID has changed as well. We can see we have a different vCenter ID for that VM because we've migrated it to vcsa03, and we also have a different virtual machine ID, which is composed of the vCenter ID and the new MoRef. What we don't see here, though, is behind the scenes, Rubrik has linked these two IDs together 
in order to maintain backup history and snapshot chains. So let's go back into Rubrik and see what we have. Okay, so let's go ahead and search for our VM again. There's our VM link VM, we'll click on that. Now, as we can see, it now belongs to the VCSA 03.rubricusv vCenter. However, the VM is still a member of its original SLA domain, and we can still see that it has three total snapshots associated with the virtual machine. So the linking has in fact worked. Let's just make sure by taking another on-demand snapshot of this virtual machine and ensuring that we don't create another full, but we still maintain that incremental forever approach. To do this, we can simply take on-demand snapshot and our task kicks off. All right, through the magic of time, we can see that our backup is complete. So let's dive in and see what we have. As you can see, we didn't get a message saying we we're taking another full. In fact, we only ingested another 76.5 megabytes of data. So our incremental forever approach is still maintained with this backup. VM linking is really a feature that was designed for customers who are looking to migrate virtual machines in and out of different vCenter server instances. Think of things like VMware Cloud Foundation, or maybe while performing upgrades, if you decide to build a new vCenter server instance and migrate into it. Either way, VM linking has you covered in terms of keeping that management simple and easy to use and maintaining all of that backup history and Rubrik's forever incremental approach. For more information on VM linking and how Rubrik and VMware vSphere work together, check out our vSphere reference architecture over on rubrik.com. Thanks for watching.